Bean, je suis au sol, Tashiwa, Nanun, Eagle Zoom. I am Chris. This is Chris in English. And today, I want to know uh, where do your idioms come from? Every country, every language has idioms. Hello, Dad, good morning to you. I hope you're well. Happy, happy Veterans Day. It's Veterans Day. Every, uh, every language has idioms. Idioms. Uh, phrases that do not translate, do not have meaning when you translate them into another language. Idioms. Uh, and they usually come from someplace. We have idioms that come from sports. We have idioms that come from cooking. We have idioms that come from camping, just about every field. Uh, some of our idioms, in fact, come from the military. In civilian life, we use military idioms. And so we get our idioms in English from a lot of different places. Good morning. I hope everybody's doing well. Happy Wednesday and happy Veterans Day. No, stormtroopers are not officially veterans. Uh, they, they fought in a fictitious war, so I guess they're fictitious veterans. They don't really count. Uh, Veterans Day, 11-11, November 11, every November 11, we celebrate Veterans Day. Uh, and every November 11, at 11 o'clock, we have a moment of silence, because November 11 is also a day we call Armistice Day, or Remembrance Day. It's a day we uh, we celebrate the end of World War I, the Great War, the war to end all wars. Didn't work. Mr. William, good morning, sir. Happy Veterans Day. Uh, uh, yeah, 11-11 uh, is the day we honor military veterans. Anyone who served in the, uh, in the armed forces today is the day that we celebrate them. Hello, my man. Hello, uh, Nemo. Good to see you, sir. Welcome to the show. Uh, today we're celebrating Veterans Day. Veterans Day. A veteran is anyone who has served in the military. In the United States, we tend to mean the United States military, but technically, it's anyone. Um, yeah. 11-11, uh, also Armistice Day, the day that World War I ended. And at 11 o'clock today, there will be a moment of silence to remember everyone who has fallen, who fell in World War I. There's a very famous poem about the war dead from World War I. It's called In Flanders Field. Uh, but... McCabe, uh, by uh, McCabe, ah, stupid Chris, who, who actually studied this, just for you guys, who wrote In Flanders Field, McCabe, McCabe, McCray, John McCray, he wrote this poem In Flanders Field, and every year we, uh, we remember this poem, uh, and we remember our war dead from World War One, and we celebrate our veterans, everyone who uh, who served in our military to protect us. I want to take a special moment. I want to thank my friends who uh, who served in the military. Living in San Diego, there are a lot of people I have met in my life who have been in the military. I, I can't thank them all by name. But there are a few people that I would like to say a very special thank you to, people who were close to me. My brother Kenny, the Marine, thank you very much. My Air Force friend John, thank you, sir. Uh, my Navy brother-in-law, Ed, and my Navy friends, Brady and Paul, thank you guys, sincerely, very, very much. Thank you guys for walking the wall uh, and making the sacrifice to keep us safe. Uh, I appreciate it, and I know that a lot of our fellow countrymen do as well. Happy Veterans Day, everybody. And happy birthday to George Patton. He was a general during World War II. Wow. He must have felt very, very good having been born on Veterans Day. Happy birthday, General Patton. Happy birthday, Mr. Kurt Vonnegut, American author, Slaughterhouse-Five, Sirens of Titan, uh, my favorite uh, Dick Deadeye. Happy birthday, Mr. Vonnegut. Oh my goodness, a man who made me laugh so much. Happy birthday, Jonathan Winters. American comedian. He had his own TV show, Jonathan Winters Show. He also was on Mork and Mindy. So many movies. Happy birthday, Jonathan Winters. Happy birthday, Demi Moore. 
Oh my goodness, it's Demi Moore's birthday, born on this day in 1962. Yeah, you know her. She was in the movie Ghost. Yeah, she she made the she she made the pot. Remember the Oh my love, my darling, I hunger for your Remember? You do I remember. Happy birthday, Ms. Moore. But I would like to wish a very special birthday to Mr. Leonardo DiCaprio, born 1974. Happy birthday, sir. You know him, Leonardo DiCaprio. He was in, he was in a movie called uh, The Departed. He was in a movie called Inception. He was in a movie called Wolf of Wall Street. He was in lots of movies, apparently. But, of course, we all know Leonardo Di DiCaprio mostly from his work on the TV show Facts of Life. It's true. Leonardo DiCaprio, he started on the TV show. You take the good, you take the bad, you take them both, and then you have DiCaprio. DiCaprio. Happy birthday, Mr. DiCaprio. If you have a birthday right now or coming up, please let me know. We can we can celebrate celebrities all we want, but I want to celebrate you. You tell me when it's your birthday, and I will celebrate you right here on the show. That's my promise to you. But you're not here for birthdays, are you? Oh, no, 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 no. You're not even here for, for Veterans Day. Oh, no, 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 no. I know why you're here. You are here. Oh, and this is, this is a good one today. This is a good one. Today you are here for the Word of the Day. Yes, my friends, I am going to teach you a, an English word that you can use in your English-speaking life, and I hope this word is useful to you. Useful? Is that a hint? Is that a clue? Is that information that can help you figure out what our word of the day is? Hope that the word is useful. Why, yes, that is a clue. Because our word of the day today is an adjective. This is not a common word. When I learned this word this morning, it was the first time I had ever heard this word. But it's now maybe my new favorite word. I love it. Our word of the day today is ocious. Oceus. I've heard it two, two ways. Oceus and oceus. I'm going to go with oceus. Adjective. Serving no useful purpose. Having no good reason to exist. Oceus. Here's your spelling. Strange spelling on this one. Ready? O-T-I-O-U-S. Oceus. Serving no useful purpose. Having no reason to exist. Here's a sentence for you. The movie won Best Picture in the Academy Awards, even though it was mostly oceous nonsense. The movie won an award, but it was oceous nonsense. Yeah, it didn't have a reason for being made. It didn't have a reason to exist. This obviously is not a sentence about Star Wars, but there are many other movies that this sentence could be about. Oceous. How about this one? How about this one? Joe Biden will be the next president of the United States despite Donald Trump's oceous legal claims. Oceous. Serving no useful purpose, having no reason to exist. How about you? Do you have a sentence using our word of the day, oceous, O-T-I-O-U-S, an adjective that means having no reason to exist, having no good, useful purpose? If you have a sentence using our word of the day, go ahead, write it right here in the comment section. I will read that word out loud and you will become internet famous. And that, that's not oceous. I have almost no election information to hand out to you guys today. Yeah, December 14th is when the state electors will confirm the vote. 
Uh, hopefully that will be the day. That will be the day it's decided. That's the day it's decided. Or maybe January 6th when the Senate and the House of Representatives assemble to count the votes that the electors send in on December 14th. We're almost there, guys. We're almost there. Uh, question of the day is, where do your idioms come from? Every language has idioms. Every language has phrases that when you translate them to another language, they, they, they don't translate directly. They have no meaning when you translate them to another language. We get our idioms in English from a lot of places. We have idioms from the realm of cooking. We have idioms from the realm of movies, uh, TV, entertainment, music. Idioms can come from every walk of life. Today, in honor of Veterans Day, I found at a website called dailywritingtips.com some idioms originally from the military that we now use in civilian life. So here are five idioms that we use in the, that they use in the military that we also use in civilian life. Here we go. The first one is AWOL. And this is an acronym. Acronyms are, of course, when we take the first letter of a word in a series of words and we create a new word out of those words. A acronym. That was a horrible way to describe acronym. But AWOL is an acronym. It means absent, with, out, leave. A, absent, W, with, O, out, L, leave. Absent without leave, AWOL. And it refers to military personnel who desert their posts. A military person who leaves their post when they're ordered not to. In general, in civilian life, AWOL describes anyone who abandons a location or mentally disengages from a prog uh, process or program or project. AWOL. Absent without leave. The next one, bite the bullet. This is a this is a phrase that I have on my phrase of the day chart. Some of my old students might recognize this one. Bite the bullet when we uh, when we have to do something that we don't want to do. This this comes from the military. The expression refers to the tradition of giving a wounded soldier a bullet to bite on. Why? Well, the soldier has to have surgery, and the doctor doesn't have anesthetic. So it's going to be very painful. So the soldier bites the bullet, and that helps him concentrate on something other than the pain. In general use, biting the bullet is when we have to do something we don't want to do, to bite the bullet. Started in the military, but now we use it in civilian life. Our next one! And this is a good one, to close ranks. To close ranks is a military expression. And it uh, it's, talks about after a an army marches. As an army marches, they, they kind of naturally spread out. And that's not really how you want to start fighting. So before you start fighting, you, you return to your close, tight ranks, to close ranks. Uh, and yeah. And it means to, to compact into a fighting force. In civilian life, closed ranks talks about an act of solidarity towards someone who is the subject of criticism. Uh, we have an example today. A lot of Republicans are closing ranks around the president. Yeah, they're forming up around the president and his osseous legal claims. Oh, she is. I used the word of the day. Rank and file. Rank and file it describes how soldiers march. When, when soldiers are all lined up, each row is called a rank. And when we count the rows back, that is called a file. I did that wrong. These are the ranks. 
And these are the files. I know this because it's the same in chess. So, when we talk about rank and file these days, we're talking about the ordinary, regular employees of a company. The people that the customers see. The, we call them the, the foot soldiers, the people on the ground, the people doing the actual and real work. These are the rank and file employees. And that's how we use rank and file, a military term in English. One more! And this is a great one. Maybe my favorite one. And I didn't know that this was a, a military term. Oh, I guess I, I could have guessed. The word is scuttlebutt. Scuttlebutt. I'm even going to spell this one for you. It's such a great word. S-C-U-T-T-L-E-B-U-T-T. -T -T, scuttlebutt. Scuttlebutt is gossip and rumor. That's how we use it today. It means gossip and rumor. But a couple few hundred years ago, uh, it was a barrel or a cask. The butt was called, was a barrel or a cask, and it was full of water or something else to drink. And when you broke the top of the barrel to get at the liquid inside, that was scuttling, the verb to scuttle. So the scuttlebutt was the, the barrel that was open so people could drink out of it. So why does this now mean rumor or gossip? Well, apparently the sailors on the boat would gather around the scuttled butt to talk about gossip and spread rumors. Today we call it water cooler talk, when people in an office gather around the water cooler to gossip and spread rumors and share the scuttled butt. Yeah, that's it. Those are our words, our idioms from the military that we still use in, in civilian life. Yeah, I think they're great. We had scuttlebutt, my favorite, rank and file, close ranks, bite the bullet, and a wall. There's not a lot, but there are some. Anybody out there have any questions about our words of the day, our, our idioms, our word of the day, osseous? Anybody out there have anything they want to share about Veterans Day? Anybody out there got anything they want to share in general? Tomorrow is Thursday. I'm excited. Tomorrow we are all of us, all together. We're going to start planning our Thanksgiving. And it all starts with the bird. So that means tomorrow we are going to talk turkey. Mm. Yeah. And by the time Thanksgiving gets here on the 26th of November, we will have talked about, oh, everything that you can cook for your Thanksgiving dinner. That's my plan, at least. Tell your friends. Tell your family. Show up tomorrow for your Thanksgiving cooking instructions. That's what I got. I hope you all have a wonderful Wednesday. Find and thank a veteran. Uh, I'll look forward to seeing you guys tomorrow. We'll talk turkey. Until then, please remember, my name is Chris, and I love you all. Go away.